Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Community of Grace. We gather on this holiday weekend, and it's wonderful to see all of you here and present in this new way that we are, are worshiping together and have been for the last six months. We are grateful for your presence today as we are working to create community across time and space now. And one way we do that is to hold each other virtually in this new space that we are using. Today we are celebrating communion, so if you need to get elements for that, please, please feel free to do that. We'll be doing it within the context of the sermon today. I'd also invite you to scroll through, as many of you have already, and see who, who is worshiping with us. You can say hi in the chat box down, down below. We welcome you all. It's, it's a great place to, to ask questions or to interact, just to wish each other well. We will also use the chat room later on to share your prayers as we come to God in prayer in that time. We also realize that Zoom is not for everybody for a, a variety of reasons. And so I've been asking each of you to think of who is not worshiping with us today. Think of them, hold them in your heart as we worship. And then later on this week, give them a call or tell, tell them that you did that and that we miss them in worship and realize that for some, that just isn't an option at this point. This morning, we're going to be using Psalm 148 as our text, and the sermon title is The Lord is Good to All. You will remain muted for this service until towards the, the very end, and I will give you instructions to unmute yourself, where we share in that holy chaos of voices as we do our passing of the peace. And always, always, we rely on grace because it is God's grace that continues to get us through these days. It is God's grace that is present here in worship and we are community of grace. We welcome Tom this morning. So Tom, if you would unmute yourself, unmute yourself and share the prelude this morning, please. Thank you, Tom. We have called ourselves together with music, and now we call ourselves together with a time of some guided silence. So I would invite you to close your eyes if you are comfortable doing that just to simply breathe in that spirit of God that, that rests among us, that moves through us, that breathes in us, that gives us our very life, that spirit that formed over creation. Just breathe in and give gratitude for that breath and breathe it out. And you breathe in that breath of gratitude and you breathe that out. And just do that a couple of more times at your own rate and your own sense of breathing. We trust that God is always present in 
every space, every time, every distance. But this morning, I invite you to yourselves to invite each of your presences into this worship space to become fully engaged in how we are doing worship during a pandemic. And as we continue to hold this space together, we're simply going to let God love us. Let God love us through the hard times, the good times, the sad times. And I especially want you to just kind of remember at a glance this past week. Think of where you've been, what you've been doing, the people you've interacted with, either in person, either in text or phone calls or emails. And think about that this week and ask, where, where did you see God present? Where did you see God this week? And because we're human, we have to ask that flip question also. Where did each of us fail to share God's grace this week? And when we notice those times, we simply notice them. We do not judge them, for we give it back to God. We do trust God has heard us in the silence of our homes, in the silence of our hearts. We trust that God remembers and God forgives. And as I tell the kids every week, remember that God loves you, that I love you, and all of Community of Grace loves each and every one of you too. We live as new and forgiven people each and every day. Amen. Our liturgy this morning is Jane, so if you would unmute yourself and share, please. <clears throat> On this holiday weekend, our text shifts back to the Psalms, particularly Psalm 145. It is a psalm attributed to David and is likely the last psalm he wrote. Usually David is writing from a time of crisis and imploring God to take action. Psalm 145 is full of praise and thanksgiving for who God is and how God acts in the world. As we prepare to hear scripture, May our eyes be open to seeing new things. May our ears hear old words in new ways. May our hearts be open to the movement of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is Psalm 145, verses 8 through 13, New Revised Standard Version. The Lord is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. May these words rest upon our hearts until our hearts open and the words fall in. Amen. 
Thank you, Jane. As I said, the sermon title this morning is The Lord is Good to All. Now, David, who wrote those, that psalm that Jane just read, surely did know heartache and grief, and he knew how to sing that out to God. And his life was anything but a walk in a rose garden. There's betrayal and adultery and murder and running for his life. So he sang of his laments and his struggles and his questions to God throughout his entire lifetime. And that's where a lot of our Psalms come from out of the book of Psalms. But this last Psalm, the last Psalm he ever wrote was a Psalm of thanksgiving and a praise for who God is. Now who wouldn't want to have those attributes, especially these days? compassion, merciful, slow to anger, unflowing, unconditional love and compassion. And then there's one that we kind of like to skip over when it says the Lord is good to all. That one gets, that one gets a little harder for us. The Lord is good to all. I find those words especially poignant on a communion Sunday when we celebrate that, that dinner, that sacrament that brings us together. For we know our lives are not perfect. We could make our own list of betrayals and arguments and our questions and how we run from God. We also know those times when we've been complicit in actions that God did not want us to do. So we could write our own set of Psalms. But one of the gifts of this pandemic, when we celebrate communion, has been this gift of creativity to do communion in new ways or to do new things in new ways as well. And I know for some that's been jarring. It's been jarring to have to do things in these new ways. For others, it's been a steep learning curve. For others, there's a deep sense of loss. And for some, there's this openness to where the spirit might be leading. But through all of that, we can repeat that phrase that David repeated. The Lord is good to all. So today we set our communion table in the comfort of our homes. We use what we have, a paper cup, a wine glass, a mug. We use what we have on hand in the terms of bread, a brownie, a donut, a cracker, a cookie, a rice cake. And there's times as we've done this in, in this setting, if I really wonder that's, that's really how God had intended to do, intended it to be all along. Simple and using what you have in the moment. I think we're all learning to use what we have in the moment in a new way in these times. I've often used Rachel Held Evans' words when I do the communion liturgy because she speaks so eloquently as to the human condition these days. And I think, I think David would concur with her from the Psalms that he wrote. And yet she always includes that attribute of God that welcomes us back together. This is her first, her first quote. She says, this, the church is like God saying, I'm throwing a banquet and all these mismatched, messed up people are invited. Here, have some wine. The Lord is good to all. Secondly, she says, this is what God's kingdom is like. A bunch of outcasts and oddballs gathered at a table, not because they are rich or worthy, but because they are hungry and they said yes. And there is always room for more. The Lord is good to all. And her final quote, Christianity isn't meant to be simply believed. It is meant to be lived, shared, 
eaten, spoken, and enacted in the presence of people. The Lord is good to all. I served a small church while I was in seminary uh, at San Francisco. And there was a, commun a communion Sunday at this church and their practice was for people to come forward, take the piece of bread, dip it in the cup and commune and then return to their seats, much like what we do at Community of Grace. Now on this particular Sunday, Alex was there and Alex is a four year old boy and Alex is always on the move. He wandered constantly during worship. Sometimes he was sitting on the steps. Sometimes he was walking up and down the aisles. It didn't matter because Alex was welcome there. But as you might guess, Alex could also be a bit stubborn about that. And again, it didn't matter because the Lord welcomes all. So his grandmother happened to be serving that Sunday. We were about halfway through communion and Alex stopped dead in his tracks, right beside his grandmother. And his eyes began to track what was happening. He watched the hand serving the bread, the hand taking the bread, dipping it and eating it. You could see his eyes visually with his head do this pattern back and forth and he was rooted in that space he was so very present to what was happening the lord is good to all in a former church i served glenna was a regular worshiper of that church although she never joined the church she was estranged from her family and that church was her family. Now she had her share of quirks and, and for her metaphors just didn't work with, Bi with the Bible and Jesus. For her life was pretty much black and white. There wasn't much middle ground with Glenna. She only celebrated communion on Monday, Thursday, not any other time of the year. And I finally asked her why. No one had ever asked her why. I asked her why. And she said, because that's the only time Jesus ever took communion. The Lord is good to all. It is this God then who gathers the church together. It's this God that doesn't care what kind of bread we have or what we have in our cups. It is this God in whom David placed his faith. So come now and let us celebrate this feast together, this feast where God welcomes us all to the table. This morning, our invitation to the table comes from a variety of churches around the United States and one from Canada. So I'm going to let them welcome us to our table this morning. Our first welcome comes from communion by the Hudson River and Lake Superior. And invitations from the Washington DC area and New Jersey. And from New Brunswick, Canada and Alberta. A 19 year old standing by a 90 year old bull serving communion. Nature is one of God's biggest revelations into the beauty of God, and we celebrate communion outside in these locations. And Minnesota and Arkansas welcome community of grace to the table. North Carolina and Wisconsin. Montreal, Canada and Nebraska.
and California. So you are invited to this table. Each and every one of you is invited. We come in many ways to this table. We come broken, we come whole, we come hurt, and we might come full of doubts. But the Lord is good to all, and all are invited to this table across time and space. Let us pray. Holy One, out of the chaos you breathed life, and life came to be. You continue to breathe life throughout the lives of the people in the Old Testament. Abraham, David, Sarah, Rebecca, Tamar, the judges, and the kings. You breathe life into the world with the life and teachings of Jesus. Feeding, caring, praying, healing, and including people others deem expendable. We trust the resurrection in bringing new life out of death. Holy Spirit, you make all things new. Bless this bread, the hands that made it, and the earth that gave it, for this is the bread of life. Bless our cups and what they contain, regardless of the source, knowing what we drink takes the works of the hands and the earth. It is a cup of grace poured out for all. Holy Three, as we are gathered across time and space, bring us life, grace, mercy, justice, forgiveness, and compassion, the divine wind of joy, hope, and possibility. Amen. We use what we have as we are coming to this table today. So I would invite you to take your bread and hold it. And if you would want to break it, that's wonderful. Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Eat in remembrance of me. The Lord is good to all, the bread of life. And he took the cup and he poured it out and he said, this is my body poured out for you. Drink in remembrance of me. The Lord is good to all. The cup of grace. You may do your communion by intention if you haven't already. You may do them individually. The choice is yours. But let us commune as we celebrate that the Lord is good to all. We have indeed been given the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Holy God, in so many ways we come to this table and leave as different people. May your grace sustain us, your love empower us, and may the Spirit continue both to comfort us and to open us to new possibilities. In a time of silence, now we simply set with the blessings of this meal and the blessing that the Lord is good to all. Amen. We welcome Brooke this morning. And Brooke, if you would like to unmute yourself and please share with us. Great. Uh, this morning's song is going to be, and I promise it won't be the title, um, but it's going to be, I Could Sing of Your Love Forever. But we won't, we'll cut it a little bit short. So <laughs> here we go. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. 
So I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. So I will daily lift my hands. For I will always sing of when your love came down. I can sing of your love forever. 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 Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. So I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, so I will daily lift my hands. For I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever. 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 I know I feel like dancing. Well, it's foolishness, I know. But when the world has seen the light, they will dance with joy like we're dancing now. I could sing of your love forever. 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 Thanks, Brooke. Just a couple of opportunities for ministry. Again, we'll have Connect and Reflect at 6.30 this evening outside on the patio at the church. Bring your face mats and your lawn chairs. And Ron and Laura are hosting that. And thank you for doing that, Ron and Laura. Also, we're doing bench visits. I'm doing bench visits on those lovely benches outside uh, our church as well. Uh, if you want to have a bench visit outside, let me know. You can email or text me or call me, and I would love to schedule that for you. Starting next Sunday, the Presbyterian women will have their farmer's market available on Sunday evenings at the Connect and Reflect. So watch for those exact times uh, and drop off, low, drop off times in the Wednesday church email. When went out last week. It'll go out again this week. We give of our time, talents, and our treasures. Um, passing our plates doesn't happen these days, but we continue to give, and you all have been remarkably, remarkably wonderful. And we are grateful. We are, are, are beyond grateful for your generosity and your dedication to Community of Grace. Again, I just remind people you can do that through our online platform, through our website, or you can send your check to our post office box and Carol will take care of it at the church. So let us come to God in prayer and let us dedicate all that we are, all that we have given to God. Let us pray. For the blessings of this day and all our days, God, we thank you. Except we pray not just the money we give, but also our lives freely offered in gratitude for all you have done for us. Use them both in this place and wherever you might take us. Amen. Some of you have already shared your prayers in the, the chat room box. That's wonderful. You can continue to share those. I will pick those up at the end of our prayers of the people and share them. I do remind you that. We record this and, and share it to YouTube so those become public. If they need to remain anonymous, please make sure those prayers do so to prevent, uh, protect the confidentiality of our people. So let us come to God in prayer. Holy and gracious God, here we are again, another Sunday. We continue to hold much in our hearts. 
We know that some of those words will not be spoken or even written today, but we know that you hear those prayers of our heart and those prayers which have no words. You are the God who formed us. You are the God who knows us. You are the God who leads us. And you are the God who feeds us. You are the God who blesses us, the beginning and the end of all that we are and all that we hope to be. The Lord is good to all. We continue to pray for all the places dealing with wildfires, those getting all the attention in California and Colorado, and all those places fighting fires that don't get the media attention, but are costing just as much to people's livelihood and to the earth. We continue to pray for the communities in Louisiana and Texas trying to restore basic services such as power and water after the onslaught of Hurricane Laura. We continue to pray for communities experiencing violence, knowing that you have called us to be peacemakers and called us blessed in that act. We pray for all the lives lost from COVID and for the families dealing with the grief of that loss. We pray for people for whom sheltering in place is hard when it's just plain hard. We continue to pray for community of grace and all of its people. We pray for the pastoral nominating committee as they are doing their work here for community of grace. And now here are these prayers from the community as we gather to lift them up to God. From Jane, healing prayers for our son-in-law, Steve, who had rotator cuff on surgery. May his cover recovery be quick. And from Maria, prayers for our grandson, Milo, who is experiencing stomach issues. Prayers for a diagnosis and improvement. And from Paula, Prayers for a safe trip for my son and his friends as they start a seven-day backpack trip in the Wind Rivers area. And from Patty, prayers of praise for seeing long-distance family. My brother Dan came through this past Monday. My sister Jenna is visiting this coming Wednesday. I haven't seen either of them since my mom's funeral last July. And from Barbara and Paul, prayers for Abby as she seeks help for migraines. And from Kathy Moore, prayers for my dad and family. We're in a new space now. Prayers that God gives us the grace and words that we need in that new space. God is good. And from Kathy Schreiber, continued prayers for Kathy's dad as he recovers from surgery. And from Abby, prayers for Jay Carrion, who is in the hospital trying to recover from a bad fall. And from Lynn, prayers of comfort for my friend Shar and her family who laid her mother to rest yesterday. And from Brooke, prayers of thanks to Joan O'Hare for her steadfast love and care of my mom. And from Kathy Moore, prayers for my friend Lisa and Dawn as they recover from surgery. And for Maria, prayers for our dog, Benita. She's showing signs of slowing down after 15 long years of providing us with love and companionship. Holy God, we have prayed this morning, and in all that is holy, we pray now together the Lord's Prayer from the silence of our own spaces and our own homes. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I would invite you all to unmute yourself now and uh, gallery view is the, is the best way to do the sharing and the passing of the piece. It's up to, your, up to you. But this is what we call our holy chaos of voices, which is indeed holy and indeed chaotic. <laughs> but Christ was with his disciples and he, he said, the peace of Christ be with you. And the disciples responded back. Also with you. you. I would invite you then to share that peace with one another. You can do this. You can give the prayer hands. You can say names as you scroll through those, those, those faces on the screen, wishing everyone the peace of Christ. Christ, 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 Bill and Brooke and yeah, Kathy and Linda. I like them more than my aunt. And Heidi and James. Bill and the Kings and Tim Laura left. and Tim Robert Bill. and Bill and yeah, Jane get Tim and Bob. Back here. <laughs> Kathy. James, wake Peace. up. Peace of Christ. Peace <laughs> every one of you. <laughs> Well, James, James is covered with a dog, I think. I would invite oh, you to put your no hands to the it. screen if you would like to for the sharing of our charge. Again, we do this all together in that holy chaos of voices. Go out into, into the, the world, world in, in peace. peace. Have, Have courage. Hold on to what is good. good. Return, Return no one, no one evil, evil for evil. evil. Strengthen it's all that easy and all that hard. Go in peace, hope, and courage, and know that the Lord is good to all this day and every day. Amen. 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 Kathy is going to lead us in our amen. She'll give a little intro, and then we'll all come in on our amen. So, Kathy. Gonna start, yeah. <laughs> if I can get my Kathy, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> Here we go. Wait for it. Amen. We did it. 